In this video, I'm going to show you how to use GitHub Actions to do continuous integration builds on your Spring Boot Maven projects. Now, when I first set this up, I, I found a number of examples, and this kind of changed over time. There's a lot of poor examples of setting this up out there, so I thought I'd record a video, try to get what I found are good practices for using GitHub Actions to continuous integration builds on your projects with every PR. So we're going to go ahead and use GitHub Actions to set, set them up. The first thing we need to do is create a new directory. And we got to call that GitHub. And then we can do workflows, like so. And we are going to need to add in a YAML file for that. We can call it anything we want, because GitHub's going to go through and scan that. In this case, I'll call it. I'll call it Maven build. And you can use YML or, or YAML. Either will work for that. Add that in, and you can see IntelliJ does have IntelliSense built in, so it knows that we are working on a GitHub Actions file. So first thing we want to do is give it a name. And then we can say on. And take a look at what Copilot is doing. That is correct. And it's also picking up from my previous project, so that looks good. Next we need is the job stanza. And here we can give it any job name. And you can see GitHub Copilot is recommending this. This is actually from my test, so it's picking that up directly. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. We'll double check this, make sure this is run. And I don't need that comment. So what we have here is several job steps on this. So we're going to say run merge checks. This is going to run out of Ubuntu latest. That is the Linux image that is going to be used to run the GitHub action. These permissions of write, this is going to be needed for the uh, published test results. Otherwise, if we're just running tests, we don't need to have any permissions on this. We don't need to be able to write to the uh, repository or to, to GitHub. In this case, the steps that we're going to go through, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and check out of the repo. This is going to check out the code base from the repository. And the next step is for setting up Java 21. So this is going to uh, set up Java 21. I am using Java 21, the Termin. I hope that's the way it's pronounced. Termin release. Termin is an Eclipse project. It gets confusing if you look at over how Java's evolved. There was OpenJDK. That is now in the Eclipse Foundation, and it's been renamed to Termin, if I understand the history right. So that is effectively the open source version of Java. So we're going to go ahead and utilize that. And the other notable thing that I'm adding there is on line 26, we are adding in the cache maven. So this is going to set up a cache from maven dependencies. As long as my POM file doesn't bring in new dependencies, I believe that cache will get reused. On line 28, we are doing a build with maven. You can see here I am doing the dot slash maven w. And this is going to correspond to the Maven wrapper. So you do need to have the Maven wrapper on your project for that. And I do like that uh, using the Maven wrapper because that gives me control over the Maven version that is running the project. Otherwise, you need to rely upon the version of Maven that is coming down with the repository in the uh, Java setup. And that may not be the most recent version of Maven. So that, that's a good habit to use is the Maven wrapper. Then I'm doing minus B for batch. I'm going to clean the, the uh, target directory. I'm going to run the ver verify command. That is going to compile, package, run all the tests, and any integration tests. And then the, the last bit I have here in line 29 is the dash dash no transfer progress. That's an important flag to add in because as Maven is bringing down the dependencies, it will show the transfer status of that, and that really can clog up your, your log. It makes a lot of things rather unreadable. Finally, on line 31, I am saying publish test results. So this is a GitHub action that integrates with GitHub actions to go ahead and publish the test results. In this case, the main thing that I need to configure for that is the target directory. It does work with JUnit tests. And here I am saying target Surefire reports test uh, wildcard.xml, and that's going to correspond to here. And I don't have, uh, I haven't run test here yet. I can easily do that, generate the test. Come here, here to lifecycle, say verify. So again, the verify is going to go through the full lifecycle. 
of doing validate compile test package. It's a small project, so it does run pretty quickly. You can see here the target Surefire reports. I now have a Surefire directory, so it's going to look for XML files in that directory. At this point, we should be all set to go. Again, I do want to iterate again, the permissions, the right permissions are only needed for this action to run properly. This is actually going to update the pull request with that. And then let's go ahead and I'm going to add a new branch here. So go ahead and create that. Let's go ahead and commit this. Go ahead and push that up to GitHub. And let me toggle over to GitHub. And you can see here I'm on the GitHub repository. See, see that says adding build. Come here and say compare. So it's not going to run until I create a, a pull request. So let's go ahead and create that pull request. You can see here it's going to check for the ability to merge automatically. And it takes a couple seconds for the action to kick in. We'll see that pop up on the screen because right now it's uh, preparing the action. It's probably in a queue. The action didn't kick off, and I realized why. What happened? If I come back over here to IntelliJ, if I look at the build YAML, the only thing that changed in this commit was the GitHub workflows, and I said to ignore it, so that's why it didn't go. So I'm going to go ahead and add a test to that, and let's go ahead and commit and push that. It's being pushed, and if I come back over here, now we can see that it added a test that passes or bypasses the ignore rule and it's going to kick off our GitHub action. Now the, the Spring Boot Maven build is running, so I can click into this and see that it goes through. And it's going to go through and set up the test, run through uh, Maven Clean Verify. So I came back over here, and you can see that it ran through. I have two tests, so that's what that test uh, plugin does. It actually reports these test results. And let's go ahead and add in a, a failing test, just to demonstrate a test failure. So I can come in here, just do this. Obviously, that will fail. Let's toggle back over to GitHub. And you can see because I added another test in there, this is going to run the GitHub action again, and this time it will fail. I'm going to pause the video while it runs. So you can see that the GitHub action failed this time, so now it's failing. You can see that it's reporting that we do have a test failure. So the checks are failing, and if we wanted to set up some type of branch protection rule, we could do so saying that this check had to pass. And if I want to come back and fix it, we can see this again. So I committed the, the fix to the failing text. This is going to go ahead and run. I'll go ahead and pause the video, and we'll come back and take a look at the results. So it took a few seconds for it to run with the fix to the failing test, and you can see that action automatically updated our test results, so we can see everything is passing now. We see that all the checks have passed, and there's no conflict, so at this point we would be good to, to merge that. So let me come back over to IntelliJ. The, the main things that we want to look for in our Maven build is typically you're going to be doing it on a pull request. And I do like adding in these pass ignore, so you don't want to be running a build if you're just updating the, the readme in the repository. No need to build on that. Here, the permissions, those are needed for the that reporting plugin for the uh, test results. And the steps that we want to go through, pretty straightforward. Check out the repo. Set up Java 21. We are building with Maven. Again, we're using the Maven wrapper, so that's local to the repository. So it's going to build with the local Maven. We're doing a clean verify and that no transfer project that cuts, cuts down on the log chatter. And also, having this cache here, that's important. As long as your dependencies aren't changing in your POM file, if you haven't added any dependencies, it's going to go ahead and reuse a cache. And that can significantly increase or improve the performance of your builds because you're not downloading all the, the dependencies again. 
there will be cash they'll be ready to use and so your uh, first build will take a, a little bit longer with bringing down stuff following builds will be much faster because it will pull from the cash rather than downloading the dependencies and finally on line 31 that is the functionality that we use to publish the test to our github pull request